As long as I can remember, asset use in games has been something that's been incredibly controversial by both game developers and the people who play those games. So I'm going to be giving some of my thoughts on asset use in games. So, not all assets being used in games are bad. I really think there are multiple tiers of acceptable asset use, the most acceptable being things like art assets. If you're a really bad 3D artist or 2D artist and you just need some art for your game, then feel free to use art assets that you either pay for or that you get for free from places like itch.io or the asset store. Now, this does not mean that you should just go and download every asset pack you come across and just find a way to cram it into your game and just have a bunch of mixed match art styles, you should actually try to put in some effort into making sure that the art in your game is cohesive with the rest of your game and that actually makes sure it fits in with the theme of the game you're going for. In the art asset category, there's also sound effects. I would actually say that sound effects is the most acceptable use of assets since sound effects are really hard to make, much harder than any 3D models. You have to have a whole bunch of special equipment especially for things such as guns, explosions, whatever. Sure, you could get away with doing some folly stuff or some foley, however you wish to pronounce it, and doing some post-production, but it's never going to be as good as a studio-produced asset pack. Textures are also up there. Texture creation really isn't something that that many people specialize in, especially in the indie game scene. So getting textures from places like ambientcg.com, it's perfectly acceptable. I do it myself all the time as long with using art and sound assets. Uh, most people won't even notice anyways if uh, a texture is an asset or not, since they're not really paying attention to that. However, art assets such as 3D models and sounds, if you're using a really well-known asset pack, people would be able to notice if it is an asset pack. The absolute most unacceptable asset pack to use in a game if you're trying to sell a product is a template asset pack. So these are things that you'd like go to the Unreal Engine Marketplace or the Unity Asset Store and you just download a game. I mean, it's not really a game. It's not a fully complete project. However, most of the stuff is there. And the reason I dislike this is because you're not really making anything original. The gameplay logic, not yours. The general overall gameplay mechanics, that's not yours. You didn't really design anything. At most, you might be adding some art assets into there. This kind of thing would be classified under an asset flip and contains very little if any original content. Somewhere in the middle ground between templates and art assets are pre-made component assets. So let's just say you need a camera controller for an RTS game. It wouldn't really be that bad if you go to GitHub and download an RTS camera controller for the game engine you're using. But once you start using so many pre-made components and you don't really do much to customize them or make them your own, then it does start becoming an asset flip again. But if you're using them moderately just to get gameplay up and going or to add like supporting features to your game, most people don't really know how to do AI programming that well. So I'd say it's perfectly fine if they use an AI pre-made component to go ahead and get NPCs up and going in their game. But if their entire game is made of pre-made components mixed mashed together, then once again, it doesn't really something that's really that original. Ultimately, in the end, though, it just comes down to what's fun. And most people do not find pre-made template games fun. However, if you're able to download a template off the Unreal Engine Marketplace or the Unity Asset Store and change so much about it to the point where it is fun, most people won't notice that's an asset and most people won't care anyways, as long as it's fun. But if it's something that's really jank, like most templates are, then people will absolutely destroy your game in either the reviews or on YouTube or Twitter, wherever wherever people destroy games at Reddit. I don't really keep up with that. I mostly just stick to YouTube. But in the same category of it being fun, if you're, if the art style of your game takes away from the gameplay, like you're talking about dark undertones and the graphics pack you downloaded or the models you downloaded are like some cartoony low poly anime style. And people aren't really to take your game that seriously <laughs> since the art style you're using from the asset packs you downloaded aren't really fitting in with the overall theme of the game. And that can detract from the overall gameplay experience, taking them out of the immersion. And if your game is really fun to play, but art styles are completely mixed matched, it completely destroys immersion. And the only thing a person could focus on is how bad the art style is. So the big takeaway from this is if you're using assets in your game, try to tweak them, try to change them to make it fit your own game. Instead of just building your entire game off of assets, actually try to do something original in your product. Don't just 
download a bunch of stuff from itch.io or Unreal Engine Marketplace or Unity Asset Store and put it in your game because you feel like it. Do some design work, go out, find some stuff that you actually think would fit really well in your game. And then once you get that stuff, we could change the code, change the style, whatever, and people won't notice that your game's an asset flip. Oh, I also feel like I have to say this. I'm not telling people to go out there and make asset flips. What I'm telling people to do is that if people are using assets in their games, then do something to make it your own game. Don't try to rely too heavily on the use of assets in your game.